Exam 3 covers chapters 8 and 9 in the recommended Zoom doll text. Before I begin, let me tell you a little bit about where the information is located within those chapters. I'm going to teach in two main areas. One is stoichiometry itself. And because Zoom doll spreads it over two chapters, I wanted to teach that topic uh, all at one time. And then finally, the second general grouping of questions is going to be called percent compositions, and I'm going to teach those last. So now let's consider stoichiometry. Right, stoichiometry is essentially measuring things in the correct proportions. Proportional to what? Proportional to the coefficients in the balanced chemical equation. Now, there's a saying that says Mother Nature counts, but we weigh things. And let me explain that because that's important to understanding the concept. Mother Nature basically takes two molecules of hydrogen and adds it to one molecule of oxygen to produce two molecules of water in the shown equation. Now, we cannot actually count molecules as humans, as chemists. So what we have to do is weigh things. So we have to take the same proportion, 2 to 1 to 2, but we have to do that in terms of weight. That's what we mean, Mother Nature counts, but we weigh. That means for us to be able to do chemistry, we have to be able to do two things. We have to be able to learn how to count by weighing, because we weigh and Mother Nature counts. We have to do that conversion. And also, we have to be able to scale things up. This balance of chemical equation refers to individual molecules. We can't see at the molecular level. So what we're going to have to do is take two big lots of hydrogen and one big lot of oxygen to make two big lots of water. And what I'm going to define is, in a moment, what a large lot is, if you will. But first, let's look at the concept. Count by weighing. How exactly can we do that? Well, we're going to use dimensional analysis, and let me give you an example. Say we have 984 grams of nails in a bag that is securely tied, and we need to count the nails in that bag, but we're not allowed to open the bag. I only need one piece of information to be able to do that calculation, and that is I need to know how much a single nail weighs. So, for example, let's say a single nail weighs 12 grams. It's now a very simple matter to determine the counts from the weight using dimensional analysis. So, in this case, we have, we want to know how many nails, how many counts of nails do we get starting with 984 grams of nails. And we're going to make a conversion factor out of this. That's the key. Now we know there's 12 grams in every nail and that gives us 82 nails. Notice in this, if we pay attention to our units dimensional analysis, grams crosses off Units is the only number left standing on the right, and that is the only unit that I'm looking for. And so this number, 82 nails, happens to be correct. Notice what I've done. Using this simple conversion factor, I have converted a weight into a count. In other words, I have counted the nails by looking at the weight. Now, the key to that was this conversion factor. How does that relate to chemistry? Well, we actually know how much one atom of anything weighs, and so we can use the periodic chart to generate conversion factors for individual atoms. For example, Recall this from earlier chapters. The generic, any element, has a certain atomic mass 
and atomic number. It's this atomic mass that we're interested in. This is the mass, the weight of an individual material, and this is the mass in one of these. So, for example, uh, one atom of carbon weighs 12 AMU. So, from the periodic chart, I could actually generate, if I were going to do a calculation, a conversion factor from that. I could say one atom of carbon weighs 12 atomic mass units, or I could write the conversion factor upside down. There's 12 AMU and one carbon atom. There. This is what's going to allow us to count by weighing when we're dealing with molecules. Now, the second issue that we have is that of scaling up. Now, how are we going to scale up from atoms? Well, we're going to scale up, as I said, to large lots. And the lot that we're going to scale up is we're going to scale everything up, all of our weights, by a factor of 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, better known as Avogadro's number. And I'll show you why we're going to use that particular scale. Because if we scale one atom up by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, if we scale it up by Avogadro's number, we get what's called one mole of carbon. And why we chose Avogadro's number is if you have one AMU of mass, one atomic mass unit, and you have Avogadro's number of those, then you wind up with exactly one gram. And so we get to essentially keep the numbers exactly the same as is in the periodic chart. And so it works out perfectly if we use Avogadro's number. Okay, let's move along and see. Oops. A little bit clumsy here, but we're going to get there. Okay. So let's kind of review here. Mother Nature lives in the microscopic world of atoms and AMU, and we live in the macroscopic world of grams. So we can take one atom and scale it up to one mole, we can take the weight of one atom and scale it up to grams. Why this is important is this material right here, or rather this amount of material right there, we can actually see and measure and work with that. That's what allows us to do chemistry in the macroscopic world. So long as we do both of those things, so long as we count by weighing and so long as we scale up. I wanted to take just a quick second and let you know just how large are scaling thumbs up. How large is a mole? If we took one stack of pennies and stacked them on their side, one mole of pennies, Avogadro's number of pennies, 6.02 and 10 to the 23rd pennies, would go to the moon and back 100 million times. If you consider the supposed age of the universe to be uh, 20 billion years, then if you had one mole of seconds, you could go back to the beginning of time one million times. One of my favorites, if you have one mole of human cells, you could make six billion people. It'll over three quarters of the number of people on planet Earth right now. If you had one mole of sand, it would cover the entire United States about 2.43 inches deep. That will let you know how large we're scaling up. As a quick aside, I wanted to show you how I calculated those just as an illustration of how powerful dimensional analysis is. Let's consider, for example, the number of, of uh, people you could make from human cells. How many humans could you make starting with 6.02 and 10 to 23 cells? Avogadro's number of cells. Biology books would tell us there's 100 trillion cells in the human body, and therefore you could make 6 times 10 to the ninth humans, or 6 billion humans. You can also see sample problems here for the grains of sand, and you can also see it 
for the age of the universe. Dimensional analysis is a very powerful tool, and not only is it useful, but it is really, for what we're doing in this chapter, it is critical.